So usually when we talk about gravel bikes, a lot of the innovation seems to be coming from the US. In today's video, I'm going to review a gravel bike from a British bike brand who's actually been creating this style of bike for quite a long time. This is the Peregrine by Singular Cycles. If you want to know more about their backstory, definitely check out this podcast that we did with Sam, the founder, and he talks about the whole history of Singular Cycles. In big broad strokes, the Peregrine is a 29er drop bar bike that melds together classic styling with modern componentry. You can tell that Sam has really taken cues from the old school French constructors with the partially lug construction as well as the nice detailing on the fork crown. Before we get into the review, if you guys have been enjoying the videos on the channel lately, definitely stop by the merch store. We still have a handful of our performance Paisley party pace cycling caps left. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, uh, but I don't do paid bike reviews. I've reviewed almost a hundred bicycles at this point and have gone paid zero dollars uh, for the time it takes to assemble, to ride, to film, to disassemble it and ship it back. I do this because like many of you, I'm very skeptical about reviews I see online. And to me, it's a conflict of interest. So the way that I'm able to continue this channel is literally through selling stickers and merch. Uh, some AdSense, but also our Patreon community. The Peregrine has a steel frame and fork. It's got nice touches like this lugged and biplane fork. Beyond being just a good looker, it's got a lot of functionality, uh, double eyelets at the dropout, as well as mid fork eyelets, so you can run fenders and a front rack. And despite its classic good looks, it does have modern fitments. So through axles and disc brake. This particular build is rocking Paul Clampers, a channel favorite. Uh, the wheel set is by a brand called Hi-Fi. They're based in Portland. The tires are by Simworks. These are the super yummies and they are 29 by 2.2. Interestingly, the stated tire clearance for the bike is 29 by 2.1 or 27.5 by 2.3. All that to say is that you can stick some fat meats in there looking at the rear clearance by the bottom bracket. This is definitely on the upper edge of what this bike will clear. Looking at the cockpit, it has this beautiful stem by Simworks again. I, I believe these are salsa cowbells. Uh, the controls are campy record and the tape is by Physique. Moving backwards, you'll notice the relatively level uh, top tube. At the bottom bracket, this is where things get interesting. One of the things that Sam, the founder, likes to include on his bikes are an eccentric bottom bracket. And it gives you some adjustment so you can tighten the chain if you're running single speed. But you can also play with bottom bracket height, raising and lowering uh, your cranks. So as you change wheel and tire sizes, you're not slapping the ground. Let's talk about the drivetrain. It is sporting some super fancy and super awesome looking Ingrid cranks and rear derailleur. These are from a very small batch and artisanal component maker based out of Italy. The pedals are the Simworks bubbly pedals. Uh, they look really aggressive like some old school bear traps. But in my experience, I found that the notches are actually fairly rounded and aren't aggressive as, let's say, mountain bike traction pin. It does, however, provide a nice and wide supportive platform. Moving to the rear, it is a one by drivetrain, uh, one by 12 in this instance. I believe the cassette is an 11 to 42 or 11 to 46. And it's also rocking the Ingrid rear derailleur, uh, which is pretty interesting. It, it's partly CNC'd as well as having some composite material. I, I believe they're 3D printed, don't quote me on that. Uh, I'll link to the website below. It's, it's definitely expensive. I think this rear derailleur is like six, hundred bucks or something. I'll, I'll flash the price up. It's a value proposition, however, is that it's really modular. If you wreck it, you can replace it. You can also change uh, some doodads on the rear derailleur so it would work with SRAM as well as Shimano. So it definitely costs money, but for that money you get modularity and repairability. And it seems like these days the right to repair uh, stuff you buy is kind of the new luxury item. In the rear it's got a single eyelet, but it does have eyelets so you can run a rear rack. Topping off the build is a Simwork seat post with a Brooks Cambium saddle. On our scales, uh, this is a size medium by the way. Uh, I found it a little bit too big for me but still rideable. It weighed in at about 27 and a half pounds. So not the lightest bike but it is sporting some fairly fat meats at 29 by 2.2. Okay so enough of the boring stuff. How does this bike actually ride Who's it for? What bikes does it remind me of? When, when I was riding this bike, the two words that popped up in my head uh, were solid and 
planted. The calculated trail of the bike with this tire size is 69, so a little bit on the higher side, but I think the larger wheel and the wider tires also added some pneumatic trail to the bike. So overall, it felt like a relatively higher-ish trail bike. What that translates to is really predictable and really stable handling in the front. Descending on rough double track, it was completely fine, not an issue whatsoever. It would just kind of plow through everything. The big meats added some nice suppleness and suspension to the descent, and overall was a rock solid descender. In terms of the rear of the bike, the rear chain stays are 445, so definitely on the longer side. I think this adds to the stability and the smoothness of the bike. Probably the bike that this most reminds me of is my Rivendell Sam Hillborn, but with modern componentry. It has that same all-rounder light touring bike feel where it's made to go the distance, keep you comfortable. The handling isn't super spicy. You know, it's not gonna be your choice for a crit bike or a cyclocross race. But if you're going on those all day gravel and road adventures and carrying a load, then this bike would be for you. Another bike that this is kind of reminiscent of is a long haul trucker, probably a little bit more get up and go than long haul trucker and definitely a little bit more liveliness, but in that general direction. In terms of pros, I love the styling. I love this melding of classic looks and aesthetics and construction uh, techniques but being able to use modern componentry. So if you've always wanted a Rivendell with disc brakes, then this might be the way to go. I love that it has kept its utility. You can put racks and fenders on it. So if you're making that big investment, it's a bike that can be your daily driver as well as your exploration rig. I know some of you are gonna be wondering how the bike shifts and what I think of the Ingrid components. Uh, it shifts well with the Campy 12 speed. I think it's truly hard to tell what a rear derailleur feels like in the index system, just because most of the feel that you're getting is from the shifter. I, I think if you run the rear derailleur with a friction shifter, that'll give you a little bit more sense of what it's actually like, you know, how strong the, the spring is. For me, it shifts well for an index system. It wasn't mind blowing or anything. It was just, it, it worked. And I think that's the most you could ask for in a shifting system. In terms of cons, the bike is a little bit on the weighty side, but I think we have to kind of off, offset that by the fact that it's running some pretty big meats on it. The, the other con is also a matter of perspective. If you're looking for a fast and twitchy handling gravel racer or, or road bike, then this is probably not the bike for you. It, in my opinion, it definitely leans more towards light touring. So definitely a bike that you can take on gravel rides if you're not racing it. Also a great bike for, you know, mixed terrain, rough stuff, uh, overnighters or, or, what, or what have you. At the last con, and this is probably uh, the more significant one uh, for me and might be a deal breaker for some of you, is that I feel like the bike is designed for taller people. You, using the lug construction, you're a little bit constrained to uh, the slope of the head tube. I was riding the size medium and basically had about an inch of seat post uh, showing and very little stained over height. Th this kind of makes sense because Sam is like six foot and he was designing around the 29er inch wheel. So not to say that you couldn't ride this if you were a shorter rider, you just have to be more comfortable giving up standover clearance. If you guys enjoyed this unpaid bike review and found it helpful or entertaining, uh, definitely support the channel by picking up some stickers or one of our performance Paisley cycling caps. And as always, keep the supple side down.